Taylor here with AgriSpray Drones. It's a nice brisk day here in Missouri. We're at an orchard today, and we're gonna show you the orchard mapping feature on the T40. See, the T40 has some really, really cool features, not just on the spraying and spreading side, but also on the mapping side. So what do I mean by mapping? Well, by mapping, I mean actually taking pictures and stitching those pictures together to create uh, a really, really detailed image that has uh, a lot of data associated to it as far as height um, and obstacles and trees and all of that kind of stuff in that actual data. And it does that all on the remote and on the drone. Before the T40, we had to do all of this through Terra and through um, a, uh, you know, a mapping drone, a camera drone, and it's a whole separate process. And now all you need is a drone and the remote, and you can do this. So let's get started. I'll show you the whole process start to finish, and then I'll show you how, how it sprays. So to start off with, we're going to boot up our remote. We'll get to where you guys can see this. Okay, we're going to go to begin just like always. And then up here in the top left, this is where our, our task selection is. And so we're going to select fruit tree mapping. Okay, now you also notice that up here, I've got RTK. It says manual route RTK. If you want to do this mapping, you have to have RTK. So in your settings, this is where the RTK is located. We'll show how to connect to all of this on a different video because there's different options for connecting to RTK. So once you have uh, your RTK connected and you're in the orchard mapping mode, now you can see this is the area that we want to map. Now we are on, uh, on Wi-Fi right now. Uh, we do have imagery loaded into the remote as far as uh, satellite imagery goes. So we can see the area we want to map. So all we have to do is click Add. And then we'll go through and I'll tell you a few parameters and guides as far as uh, the mapping process here. And notice, the biggest thing to notice here, we've got 13.2 uh, acres is our limit. That's because of A, flight time, and B, processing power of the remote itself. This is not a, this is not a high-powered computer, so it can only process so many images at, at once. So 13 acres is your limit on orchard mapping mode. Now over here, you also see it says no obstacles at a height of 6.1 feet. This is actually 61 feet, not 6.1. The decimal's in the wrong place, which means the drone is actually going to fly 60 feet high over, um, over the, the terrain or over whatever obstacles it sees. You can see here with the trees, it actually goes up and over the trees. This is 60 feet above the ground or above the tree canopy. Okay, and that's it there. Uh, it did say no payload, so make sure you have no payload. Here we have zero gallons in the tank. Obviously, we'll be mapping with a full tank. All right, so now we have clicked Add, and we have our point is selected as crosshairs. You can walk around it with the RC and map that way, but since we have satellite signal, we're just going to map it with the, um, with the RC. So add your, put your crosshairs on the corner of your desired area. And just go around and click Add. Now we're going to stay away from that tree right there because that tree is a bit over 60 feet tall and you know we just don't want to get too close to it. Okay, so there we have a box around our orchard. You can see it goes ahead and it drops in our route. Uh, so this is the mapping route. So it's going to start here right behind us and it's going to go down and back uh, and then down again and then it's going to end. So do a confirm just like always and give it a name. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and fly. And so see, before you fly, it's going to tell you, um, you know, our estimated flight time is just one minute. Uh, photo count 42, mapping area is 1.3 acres. Okay, uh, so we'll turn around and we'll watch the drone, make sure it's good to take off. Uh, everything looks good there. So we'll hit start. It's going to upload the mission, just like when they're spraying mission. And then you can set all of your, um, uh, your parameters there. Slide to execute. Now it's going to take off. So the drone's going to go straight up to 60 feet from where it took off. And you see it turned to face the start point, the green start point. So there it reached the start point. Now it's going to turn and face parallel to the flight path. It's going to point the camera straight down, and it's going to start flying and taking pictures. It's going to send these pictures back directly to the remote 
and it's going to start updating this map. Can you see it there? Okay, so there you see there's the drone flying along its route, and you see it's starting to pop in those images. And it's going to overlay those images on top of that Google satellite, the Google Earth map. Turn the satellite image off. On the All right. Show that a little better. There, there you see the actual imagery from the camera itself. There you see it's pausing to take pictures. And if we go up here, we can turn off our actual satellite imagery from Google. And there you see the images overlaid. These are rough images. Once the drone's done, it'll process these. You can see over here, 64% of our route is done. 57, 58 pictures have been taken. It estimated, it always overestimate or underestimates. It estimated 42 pictures it would take, and we're already up to 65 pictures, and it's not even done yet. You can see reconstructions at 0%, but total process, progress is at 24%. That basically just means total process, progress is kind of a combination of your flight time, so how much time it takes to actually fly and take the pictures, and your reconstruction. There you go. Our reconstruction just got started. The drone is not even back to us yet. And reconstruction has already started and almost a third of the way done there. So the drone's returning home to us. This is just like any other spraying mission, returns home automatically. Now, since it is on RTK, it may actually come down and land automatically. If you guys have run a T-30 or any other kind of Agris drone, you know that it hovers at 10 feet and asks you to, to land it uh, for you or asks you if you want to land it. With a T-40 and RTK, it may come down automatically, just like this. You can cancel that. See, I, I pushed up right there. I kind of slowed that process down. There you go. The reason the T-40 lands automatically on RTK is because RTK is extremely precise. So you see where it took off and landed is the exactly the same spot. And it uses two features to do this. It uses obviously the RTK um, uh, correction. So very, very precise GPS signal. And it also uses the camera on the bottom of the drone. It points that camera down whenever it takes off takes a picture essentially of, of the landing area, and then whenever it comes into land, points that camera straight down to make sure that landing area is unchanged from when it took off. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'll turn this so you guys can see a little bit better. That good there? Okay, so total progress is 100%. We're all done. Um, and so if we go into planning on the right side, there you see it overlaid uh, the map, or the map that it created, on top of the imagery from Google. And so we turn off that imagery. Now we have the uh, entire orchard planned and mapped. Or we have it mapped, not planned yet. So that's about the end of this video here as far as the tutorial part of it. There's a lot to unpack when it comes to the actual um, you know, mission planning uh, and route creation. Uh, so if you want that video, that'll be available on our customer resource folder as part of a series for our mapping and, and orchard route planning. For, so for you guys right now here on YouTube, we're going to go ahead and jump to what that actually looks like in terms of spraying this orchard. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.